Hi, I'm Leslie Laplace, fitness manager at Goodwin House Alexandria. It's been a little while since I've done one of these, but uh, we're back on track. And uh, today we're going to be talking about um, some exercises and stretches that you can do for the chest area. Um, I'm going to use a mixture of a stretch band and weights so that um, it, for those of you who might have one or the other or even both at home, uh, you'll have different options for doing exercises. And so we're going to actually start with um, a small ball. So if you don't have a small ball at home, you could get a pillow or something else that you could kind of squeeze a little bit and just put some pressure on. Uh, we're going to hold the ball right between the palms of your hands and stand up nice and straight and elbows out to the side and we're just going to squeeze the ball between the palms and then release. You should feel the muscles in your chest and in the front of your shoulders kind of contract and, and get tense and we're going to push and release and push and release. So as you're doing that, you also want to stay up nice and straight. We're not hiking up our shoulders. Our shoulders are down and we're even engaging our core a little bit. Now, you can press, continue to press, and then ex start extending the arms. This starts to get really hard. You can feel the tension in the chest and you should feel your core engaging with the ball and your arms stretched out in front, and then you're going to bring it in. You can relax, squeeze, press it out, take it in, and relax. As always, if you feel any pain with any movement, either don't do it or modify it, and don't move all the way in to that discomfort. So this is a really good warm-up um, thing to do. Again, if you don't have a ball, you could get a pillow or something kind of squishy that you can push your hands into. All right, the next one is one of my all-time favorites because it's portable. You don't need equipment. It goes with you everywhere and it works your chest, your arms, depending upon where you position your arms. It can work your triceps, the back of the arms, it works your back a little bit and your core and that is the push-up and a lot of people hate push-ups but they're very important because if you are down on the floor you need to build up that body uh, that strength um, pushing your upper body up so you can get back up um, off the floor the other thing is what about opening up a door that swings out, or closing a door, a car door, or anything that requires that pushing uh, motion, you're going to need some upper body strength. So to do a push-up, I'm going to show you, um, I'm going to show you a floor push-up. Um, before I go down to the floor, I'm going to show you a modified push-up, and there's a, a variations on the modifications themselves. So everybody can do a push-up. The best way to start if you don't, um, if you really don't have very much upper body strength is you can do it against a wall. Um, I have mirrors here, so I'm actually going to use a chair and I'm going to use the back of the chair here. So you can also put your hands on a wall, um, having your arms up, and I'm going to use a chair. So my hands are going to be on the back of a chair and I'm just going to step my feet back a little bit. Now, the important part of the push-up is making sure that your core is engaged and you stay in a nice straight line. This is what a push-up is not. It is not bringing your head down to the chair and pushing your hips back, okay? What a push-up is, is it's going to be using the arms. I'm going to bend my elbows, lowering my body, my chest to the chair, 
and pushing back up. The core comes because you can see I should be staying in a nice straight line. My core is engaged, so now I'm also getting a little bit of some core work as well, and I push all the way back up. I'm going to come down, and then I'm going to come back up. Okay, so great modification. Again, you can do it on a wall so your arms are higher, and just start by bringing the chest down to the wall and pushing back. As you get stronger, your hands can go lower, or you can bring your hands down to a countertop. Countertops are great, top of a table, anything that is not going to move on you. You want it stable. You don't want it pushing out. Even on a chair like this, you need to be careful that you're not pushing away, that you're coming down and pushing down on it. If I start pushing out, my chair is going to push out. So let's go down to the ground and work our push-up down on the floor. So I'm going to start with the modified push-up. So for those of you who saw the video on core, I'm almost positive I did planks in there. And we're going to come into that plank position. So if you're on your knees, your hips are going to be slightly forward. Again, I should be in a nice straight line from head to knees. Okay? Again, you don't want your hips back because then what happens when I do my push-up is all I'm doing is genuflecting. I'm just bringing my forehead down to the mat. And what I want to do is I want to bring the chest to the floor. So I'm going to lower my body and I'm going to push back up. Now, if you're just starting, you may not have the strength to get your chest down to the floor. That's okay. Just come down and up where you can, where it's comfortable, where it's um, appropriate for you. The, uh, again, the important thing is keeping the core engaged and then bringing the body down and up. As you start to feel a little stronger, you can even extend one leg and come down. It starts to make it harder, okay? Again, the body is nice and, um, nice and straight. Um, my hips shouldn't be popping up. And the other thing that you don't want to do on a push-up is just drop the hips like this, okay? That's just dropping the hips and not necessarily really good for your back. Again, it's a bend in the elbows, bringing your arms, um, bending your arms, and then bringing the chest down. You can, uh, you can experiment with different placements of your hands about a little outside of your shoulders is good. Um, for beginners, that's just a good all-around position. The closer your hands get together, you're going to start working those triceps a little bit more. So, and it's a much, much harder move, okay? And uh, we'll get into that when we do the video for arms. All right, so a full out push-up then is going to go into a full plank position. So for those of you who can do planks, you're going to start in your plank position. Again, nice and straight. Hips are not dipped. Hips are not raised. And... You're going, to low, you're going to bend those elbows, lowering the body down and up. Keep your head in line with your spine. You're not dropping your head down either. So your eyes should be looking at the, the floor, nose pointing to the floor, and then come up. Okay? Whew. All right. Remember to breathe. And then... You can always make this even more challenging. You can do this standing with your hands against the wall, the chair, in a modified position, or even in the full push-up. If you want to 
really make it challenging. And I do these in my classes um, where we do push-ups using the chair or the railing. But you can put the, I'm going to do this from the chair. You can put the band, if you have a stretchy band, you're going to put the band up on your back, high on your back, so that the band comes right under the armpits and kind of around where your chest is. And you're going to grab the ends of the band and you're going to hold them on, on wherever it is that you're starting your push-up. So you're going to get into your push-up position, nice straight line up from the shoulders, and there should be tension on the band at the top because as you go down, it's going to slacken and then you want that resistance coming up. My chair is sliding on me here. So I'm coming down and then up. Okay, so it's going, all right, so that is to add some extra resistance if you want to make it even harder for yourself. All right, those are the push-ups. Um, using the band, and this can be done seated as well as standing, we're going to do a chest press. I'm going to do two types of presses, and then I'm going to go to the floor, and I'll show you with the dumbbells and the band. So the band is going to, again, come high up on the back so that the band comes under the armpit, and we're going to grab the band close to the chest. Now, if that's too hard when you go to press it out, you can always give yourself more band to work with. But I like to start and cue my classes to start with hands kind of close to the chest. The chest um, has big muscles in here and so you can typically go um, a little heavier or harder um, on your effort than you would say with shoulders, doing shoulder work or arms, okay, which are smaller muscles. All right, so hands are going to be close to the chest and I'm just going to press this straight out, shoulders stay down, and then I'm going to bring it in. Again, always with control. So after you do one or two, you can, you can reposition your hands if you need more or less band to make it easier or harder to give yourself more resistance. Okay? Notice what I'm, that I'm not as I go here, I'm not rounding my back. I'm staying up nice and straight and pressing forward. Now, we're going to do a fly, a chest fly. So same thing, except we're going to hold the hands. I like to hold it with my palms out. And the arms are going to have a slight bend in them. Think of hugging a tree. It is um, coming up on Earth Month. So if we're hugging a tree or you're hugging a person, then you're going to have a slight bend in your elbow. So I'm going to kind of bring it in, and then I'm going to open. So I'm not bending like this. My arms are going to be out, slight bend in the elbow, and I'm going to close and open. Close and open. Okay? Close and open, close, and open, all right? And I always suggest doing about 10 to 15 reps, you know, um, maybe two sets, and you can make a circuit with some of the other exercises that you've seen. So now we're gonna go back down to the floor, and I'm gonna show you the same exercises using some weights. So we're going to start with the band, and I'm going to put it underneath my back, and then come down. And first we're going to do that chest press. Now there's some positions I prefer over others when I do certain exercises, but you know, not everybody has equipment at home, 
and is comfortable doing a floor. So I like to try to give all kinds of options for doing these exercises. So the band should be on, uh, around your upper back, again, so that the band comes right about where your chest is. Your elbows and arms are going to be out to the side. They can be right down on the floor, kind of out at 90 degrees from your body. And you're just going to press up and towards the ceiling. Try to get full extension and then you're going to bring it down. Try to come down with control. Don't let your arms just kind of fall down. You want to come up and you want to come down with control. And up and down. Up and down. Now when you're working chest, you're also working some shoulders. You are working some triceps. So you are going to feel it in some other areas as well, but the, the major muscle that we're working is the chest, okay? There's very few exercises that we do that will not involve something else. So, but we are primarily working chest. All right, now for the fly, again, your arms can be out, a little bend, and you're just going to bring it in and out in and out. If it feels too easy, then you can always grab more band. Make it a little harder. So I always challenge my residents to make it a little challenging for them because that is how we continue to grow and get strong. All right, so do it. I put the band to the side now and just making sure I'm getting everything here. And now we're going to do um, the dumbbells. So same thing. Arms are going to be out to the side at 90 degrees. Now if you want to get a little bit of extra core work, you can take your legs into what's called a tabletop. So notice that my legs are at 90 degrees. However, you have to be very careful that your back does not arch. The core is, it gets engaged. You have to push that lower back towards the floor so that you don't over arch your back when you are using the weights here. So this is another option just to make the exercise more challenging and to get some core activation in here. And you're just going to push it up and again control the weight on the way down. So this is a regular chest press. And I'll do this next one with my feet down on the floor. Same thing. Now for my fly, my arms are slightly bent and I'm bringing it in and I'm taking it out. So again, it's a motion kind of like hugging somebody. You have a slight bend at the elbows, and you're bringing your arms in together, kind of from the side as opposed to pushing forward. So really working those chest muscles. All right, let's see what else we have here. All right, before I stand back up, we're going to do a pullover. Now, if you have shoulder or back issues, you might, you might want to skip this or talk to your doctor first. Um, you, would, you can do it with one weight. I'm going to show you with weights first and then with the band. You can do it with one weight or two weights. So one weight, you would hold the weight kind of in your hand like this. I like to hold it like this because I'm not gripping, so I'm not creating tension in my arm. I'm just kind of cradling it in my, in my hands. My arms are straight overhead, and the weight is right over my chest. This is your start and end point. Again, I can make it a little bit more challenging and work my core by taking my legs into tabletop, but that's not for everybody. 
So you're going to just keeping your arms a little bit straight or mostly straight, could be a very, very slight bend in the elbow. You're going to take this back overhead and then bring it back up straight over the chest. So you're going to get a nice little stretch in that chest area. You're going to feel those upper back muscles working as well. Okay, so that's with one weight. Now, if you have two weights and you can handle the weight, your arms are going to be overhead and you're going to take it back. It is a little bit harder and you still need to have some core control. You do not want to let your back arch. So don't let your back arch to get, uh, to help you move the weight. So core gets, is engaged right here, and then you can relax once it's back over the chest area. Okay? All right, now with the band, if you have a tube that has a handle on the end, you could hook the handle through the foot, and then you could use the whole band. You could also just tie this around your foot. That might be one way of doing it, tying the one end of the band around your foot. And this gives you more band to work with, okay? So you would just hold, let me just show you this. That way you have more band to hold. Same thing, you would hold the band right over your chest and just take it back overhead, okay? I'm gonna show you using the whole band, and I would recommend making sure that you have a band that is very long, <laughs> because you'll have more band to work with. So you wanna have your foot right in the middle of the band, and then you can take both ends and just pull overhead like this. Again, if you have a very short band, it's going to be very hard. This band is long. And don't forget to breathe. Inhale and exhale. Okay? All right. We have one more, and then we're going to get into some stretching. All right. This is going to be another standing one. Let's take your right foot. If you do two sets, then I would say right foot on one set, left foot on the other. And you're going to go into a staggered stance, which means that you're going to have one foot in front of the other. So this is a little unstable. You get to practice your balance at the same time. I think I want it around. Make sure the band is on the outside of your body. And this is going to mimic an incline chest press. So think about when you've seen people do chest presses at the gym on a bench. A lot of times their bench is up so that they're on an incline and that just hits um, the muscles a little differently. It hits up here in the upper chest and it's gonna work more of the front of the shoulders a little bit. So you're gonna definitely feel it in the front of the shoulders and in the top of the chest. And again, I'm giving you a lot of different options here so that you can find the one that's best for you. All right, so you're going to take the band in both hands and you're going to take it up on an incline, kind of in front about. So I'm in front of my head pretty much. And if you can, you really want to try to extend those arms Remember, don't hike your shoulders up. We don't want to hike our shoulders up as we're pressing. You want to keep them down, 
Keep your core engaged as you're pressing forward. So as you're pressing the band up, you're going to feel like you need to stabilize and that you need to have that core engaged. Okay. So let's start stretching now that we've worked it. So one way is to just take that hand, the hands behind the back, pull down and back, and I like to kind of look up to the ceiling, and it's a very small, I say back bend, but we're really, we're not going like this. We're just kind of lifting the chest to the ceiling and letting the eyes track up to the ceiling. So imagine that you have a string right here on the top of your chest and somebody's just pulling you up to the ceiling by that string. So we're just going to pull back, stretch, and then relax. Try to hold the stretches 30 seconds um, and you can stretch, you know, every day. Stretching is really good for you. Um, if you have a wall or a door or um, a corner, you can always come up to that corner um, and just put your hand on it. Now, I'm going to use the back of the chair, but if you have a wall or a doorway, you can put your hand right um, about shoulder height apart, no, or shoulder height, and you can put your hand right on to the wall palm on the wall. So my hands will be a little lower here. And then I'm just going to turn away from the chair. In this case, if your hand is on a wall, you can just turn away and you're going to get a nice stretch down the arms. You'll get it in the front of the shoulder and in the chest. This is a great stretch as well if you've been sitting at a computer if you've been reading, sewing, gardening, anything where you are kind of bent, a little bit hunched forward. So really, really, really good stretch for that. And then, of course, you would want to do the other side. So we'll do the other side. Again, if you have a, a wall or if you have a doorway, you can put your hand um, right on the, on the corner. Palm is flat against the wall. And then just turn away. Standing up nice and straight. And holding for 30 seconds. We're not going to hold the full time in here. All right. Hands at your ears, shoulders down. You can also have your hands on your shoulders if this bothers you. And we're just going to take a deep breath in and bring our elbows together. And then exhale and really open up. Pull those elbows wide and feel that stretch in the front of the chest. And again, inhale. You can even kind of come forward a little bit. And then exhale and open up. Good. You can do that you know, a few more times. And let's just kind of shake it out a little bit. Another good one for the, the chest area. Your arm is going to be out, thumb up. And I like to kind of make a fist and my thumb is up. And we're going to have our other hand at our ear. And I'm going to follow my thumb as I take my arm back. Now everybody's different, everybody's flexibility. Now, what's important is that your other arm stays open. Don't let this elbow come forward. You want this elbow to stay open as much as possible. And once your arm is behind you, I mean, you should be feeling a stretch here, you're going to look forward, keeping your arm back where it is, really focusing on opening up the front and then relax kind of shake it out let's do the other side we don't want to be unbalanced so thumb is up i've got my hand at my ear my shoulder is down i'm going to follow my thumb this is also good for balance and i'm keeping my elbow wide 
keeping my arm back, and I'm going to look forward. Opening up the front of the body. And relax. Woo! I definitely feel that. All right, last stretch. Back down on the floor. This is going to be, um, we're going to go a uh, child's pose, but I'm going to come up onto my fingers. Um, and that's just going to really stretch out the, um, the back and the arms a little bit. So sit back on your heels. Arms out. And just come up onto your fingertips. And feel that stretch through the front of the chest. and then you'll come up. Come up slowly, all right? Make sure that you're not dizzy. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions about the exercises, please feel free to contact me. I'm at Goodwin House Alexandria. Um, you can um, reach me at 703-824-1166. Uh, otherwise, good luck. Please be careful. Do what you can. Uh, but I hope these help you out. And thank you.